Coming up on this week's Fever Film Room, as we close in on the midway point of the season, Fever President Kelly Kroskoff joins the show to assess the state of the team. And as someone who was here from the beginning, Kroskoff shares her emotions from Saturday's Tamika Catchings jersey retirement and will preview Indiana's upcoming opponent, the Connecticut Sun. All that and more is coming up right now. Hello and welcome into another Fever Film Room. I'm Pat Boylan with us, Indiana Fever President and GM Kelly Kroskoff. Let's start uh, by going a little bit backwards. Saturday night, I know we were talking to Tamika this time last week and she wasn't sure what her emotions were going to be and then you saw what they were uh, actually during the ceremony. I'm curious from your standpoint, you've been here with her from the beginning. What was that moment like for you? I, I think very similar. I, I knew that um, I couldn't break down too much because I wanted to, to get some of the words out that, that I talked about. But, you know, it was, I think she, she put it well in terms of it was the finality of um, all of the, uh, you know, emotion and all of the time that we've spent together in terms of her being a player. And so, you know, having your jersey retired and having your number retired is one of the highest honors that a team can give a player. It was it was special in that regard. Yeah. What, what does it mean to have her around the building and around the team and in a different role but still a visible face? Well, it's tremendous. I mean, she's got she's got uh, you know such great insight as a player, first of all, and, and I think that's so valuable to an organization like ours because when you have somebody with her kind of you know background in terms of growing up in the organization and understanding everything you know the nuances around it and certainly gives us great perspective in terms of how we do things um, going forward and you know she's she's learning as well now she's kind of starting this chapter's over and this chapter's opening up and and it's been it's been fun to watch her come to work every day and and be a part of what we're trying to do fever are seven and seven off on the season you're coming off a nice win against Chicago on the road four and two over your last six it seems like the play, the, the level of competitiveness has gone up a little bit. What do you like uh, over the last six games or so? You know, everybody knew that this was going to be somewhat of a transition for, for a lot of reasons. You know, we have eight returning players from last season. I really like where we are in terms of starting to establish a little bit of a rhythm, um, a little bit of an identity, and I think that's really important. You know, if you look at record-wise, we're basically similar to where we were last year, maybe one, one game up. So I think in terms of how it looks on paper, you know, we're doing pretty well. I think the feel is starting to come around, and, and that happens. You know, once you get into a system that you're familiar with and you get in, you start creating that identity as a team, and I think that's what we're seeing. We talked to you during the offseason after the Candace Dupree trade. She was, of course, a known commodity, but not 100% clear how well she would fit here. So far, 15 points a game. She's been uh, played extremely well. Are you happy so far with every level of, of how that trade has gone down? Like a glove. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the fit. Like a glove, yeah. No, I mean, she's, you know, uh, I think everybody can see it. You know, this is... This was a great opportunity for her to come in and be um, a, a you know player that we're relying on, honestly, night in and night out. And I think you know, maybe in Phoenix that wasn't always the role for her there, but here with us, her her you know just her experience, her the way she plays the game, her presence. She has a very calming presence, and um, you know we're relying on her. And I, I give her a lot of credit. She has just folded herself right in. Um, she's just a tremendous person and a tremendous pro, and I think you win with great people, and she's been a great addition. A player who I think's made a significant jump from year one to year two is, is Tiffany Mitchell. And I know you loved her when you drafted her. She was taken a little bit later in that first round, which can be unsure territory when you draft a player in that area. Has how quickly and emphatically she's contributed surprised you at all? No. No, because, um, you know, the, uh, Tiffany's hungry. I mean, you can see it. You can see it in her every day. I thought last year towards the end of her rookie season, you know, she wore down like a lot of rookies do. They go straight from their college pro team to the pros, and you're trying to, to understand how physical it is and how quick the game is. And, and um, I'm not surprised because she's the first one here, you know, a lot of times the last one to leave. You know, she's got a little bit of that, that – this DNA in her that is going to continue to drive her. She's hungry. And players that are hungry and that, you know, have a great vision for themselves and how they can affect their team and how they can affect their organization are going to do are going to do good things. And she was coached well by Don Staley at South Carolina. I'm thrilled, you know, with with watching her progress and to me she's going to continue to be, you know, on the upside of her of her growth and and um 
we're going to keep her rested so she doesn't wear out. But, uh, yeah, we're, we're really like what we're seeing from her. You've got Connecticut here on Saturday, a chance to get over 500. Not early season anymore. We're, we're closing in on mid-season territory. They're a half game behind you in the standings. Curious from your perspective, is it too early to start looking at that and view it as a, a more important game? I, it, it is, I mean, in the sense of the big picture. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we're still at that let's get better from the last game scenario. And I see things that I, that I think we improve in, you know, mainly from the defensive side of the ball. You know, I think we're a lot of our, a lot of our growth um, still needs to come on the defensive side of the ball. Um, I love the system that Pokey has offensively. I love what we're doing defensively. There's some things from a trust standpoint and, and understanding how we're going to defend um, night in and night out. And then, you know, it's effort. It's effort every game. I mean, everybody in this league can beat anybody. You know, it doesn't matter if you're a young team or <clears throat> experience doesn't mean hunger. You know, experience just means you're experienced. If, you, if your team's not hungry and they're not ready to win every night, um, you know, you're probably not going to go very far. So I think that's a big part of, you know, our identity is is understanding, you know, game to game, where we're going to get better, and we focus on that, and then let the let the record and let the rest of it play itself out. You guys beat Connecticut in the early part mm -hmm. of the season. What kind of challenges do they provide? Well, I mean, they've got, um, first of all, a young, hungry group. Mm -hmm. You know, they're out to prove something, and they haven't made the playoffs in a while. They've got um, great talent. Um, you know, John Quill Jones is a, is a legitimate stretch five player. She's athletic. She can she can move you around on the floor. Um, they've got great guards. They're starting to kind of find a rhythm and a little bit of an identity. So teams like that are dangerous just because, you know, they're playing with a, a sense of a purpose and a sense of they have something to prove. Um, young players doesn't mean that you can't win games. You know, it just means you're young and you're trying to find your groove. And um, I think they have a great roster of players. And, you know, at the end of the day, um, we've got to be ready for teams like that because they're, you know, like I said, they're out to prove something and they're a hungry group. In general, happy with how you guys have played at home this year? I, I am. I'm happy. You know, like I said, th this was a transition. There was going to be some transition time. Um, I, I really am. I, I really like the way that we're starting to gel. You know, I think there's some consistency with watching how Bree and, and, and Larkins play together and, and Shanice and, you know, Marissa and, and Tiffany coming on and then obviously Candace Dupree doing a great job. So I like our I like our nucleus. Um, and, you know, we have to transition that to the road. And, and we have enough experience. That's where experience does matter. You know, winning on the road is you just have have to know how to you know what that takes and this group knows what that takes well coming up on saturday the indiana fever are here inside bankers live field house it's a four o'clock tip so note the earlier tip time feverbasketball.com slash tickets is how you can be here or by clicking the tickets tab right above us if you're watching this show on the website always good to chat with fever president gm kelly crosscall thanks for your time thanks